Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today we're going to be installing this Bird 12-inch Shelix cutting head on this G09 Grizzly 12-inch jointer. Um, originally, I thought this was going to be pretty easy because I watched a video of uh, a couple of other people installing jointer, you know, carbide uh, jointer cutting heads on their on their jointers, and uh, you know, looked pretty straightforward. But when I got this, I read the manual, and apparently, my <laughs> My jointer is designed more poorly than the others. I have to remove this entire top cast iron portion from the base in order to do this. So we're gonna have to use some hydraulic jacks and some, uh, some wooden spacer blocks and try not to kill ourselves with dead weight. So let's get started. Okay, so at this point we're going to remove the guard on my instructions here. That is step, step one is disconnect, disconnect the jointer from power. I've done that. Uh, remove the cutter head guard and rabbit extension table. There we go. All right, step three, remove the lock nut securing the fence carriage, then remove the fence assembly. Oh, freaking thing's heavy. <laughs> okay, it says, step four, remove the fence bracket, then remove both side access panels. I'm gonna take that to mean that this is the fence bracket and the side access panels are here and here. Step number five, open the motor access cover, loosen the fasteners on the tension rod, lift the motor up, then remove the V-belts. So there's an adjuster nut down here at the bottom and I can't really show you what it looks like because it's too far in here. Ah. I can take a picture of it or something, but I'm basically backing off that adjuster nut and then I'm lifting the motor up so that the motor uh, has less tension and then I'm going to get this belt off. Step six, put on heavy leather gloves, then remove the knives. If you have, to, if you have difficulty accessing the knives, loosen the in-feed and out-feed table locks, loosen the jam nuts and positive stop bolts located on the back of the machine, then lower the beds farther. Now, I think the way this works is, I sharpened these blades myself. I think the way this works is, uh, I just put a, a, a wrench in there and loosen up these stop screws here. I guess they say wear gloves so that if you accidentally, boom, knuckles into the knives, you don't cut your hand. That would definitely be a bad, a bad day. Now, when I watched the video of somebody doing this, what they did is they turned the knives around and put them back in. That way, they couldn't hurt themselves on them as easily. It's a pretty good idea, I think, so I think I'll do the same thing. Probably don't need that to be super tight, so that should probably be enough for that one. Next one. Okay, next one. And the final knife. Knife. 
tell you, I will not be sad to never have to sharpen these again. Not one bit. I liked, I enjoyed learning how to do it. I sharpened these with a Tormac. I enjoyed learning how to do it, but I do not want to have to do it all the damn time. I'm a lazy, lazy motherfucker. And they just, they got too dull too quickly for my taste. One, one knot and your knives are just screwed. I just, not my cup of tea, man. Step number seven, raise both beds all the way up, then tighten the infeed and outfeed table locks. This bed position will make future steps easier while replacing the cutter head. All right, so I consulted my user manual and uh, I don't think I need to, I'm hoping that I don't need to modify my stops for the jointer parallelism, because that would suck. So I'm hoping that just raising this all the way up is good enough for them. I'll do that. Well, I'll leave that unlocked for now. I don't know if they want me to lock it again. And then I'll raise this one all the way up too. Which it pretty much already was. Okay. Remove the hex nuts and flash wash, flat washers that secure the hand wheels. Then remove both hand wheels. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> Looks like that washer is painted on there. There we go. Now, how the hell do I get it off? Looks like there's a key right there. I can't just pull on that. <clears throat> Okay, so I need some way to get some leverage on that piece. I noticed that I can slide this thin piece of metal in there underneath, so I'm thinking maybe I can pull on it from that direction. But in order to do that, I need a lip on this tool, so I thought I'd maybe try to hammer it out a little bit. Anvil's a little round. Oh man, I wonder if that'll do it. Too much, I can't get it in there now. Shit, okay. That's got something. <clears throat> Let me get some gloves on. This is just so I don't cut my hands on the sharp metal. Yes! <laughs> okay. So what I have to do is I have to make like a tool so that I can reach into the space behind this and pull on it from this side because the damn thing won't come off. So the problem is it, uh, it's not like case hardened or anything. So I actually have enough strength to, to straighten it out with my body. Um, so it doesn't last very long. So we're gonna use two this time because, because uh, that'll be good. And this would actually be more useful if I did it this way. Let me, actually I could use that for the left side. Yeah, I use that for the left, but I'll use this one for the right. So, I'm trying to put just a very tiny um, curve on it and this is not really the tool for the job, but I don't have a choice. Yep, okay, I think that'll do. Okay, so I talked to 
my partner's dad, who is a, an aircraft mechanic, and he said that I should use a brass punch to do this. I don't have a massive brass punch, I've just got a small one, but hopefully that'll be good enough. So, the idea is we're going to, I'm going to pull with both handles inserted, and that's going to take some doing to get them on both sides, but I'm going to insert both handles, and then I'm going to pull with all of my might. And you, Isaac, you, you're not going to use a rubber mallet. He wants, he wants you to use a real hammer. You are going to, while I'm pulling with all of my might, you are going to reach down, you're going to put this right in the center, and you're going to slap it with the hammer. It doesn't have to be super hard, but just give it a sharp tap, okay? This one's going in like this, this one's going in like this. Come on, go in there. It went in there before. What's going on? There we go. Okay, so now I gotta work this around until it's on the other side somehow. You almost got it. Yep, almost. But now it's got to stay there. <laughs> and I've got to get the other one in too, which is not going to be easy. Are you going to get them both on this side? No, I want them on opposite sides oh. so that I can get the leverage. That's what I need. I need the leverage. Okay, so we've got the nut on here, so when I pull, even if the wheel comes loose, it's not going to come out and hit me in the face because the nut is on there. So I can, I can pull with as much force as I can possibly muster. Now if I pull with too much force, I'm going to straighten out my tools that I created. Uh, and hit your face. Well, and then I'll, then I'll fall backward. Oh, oh yep, yeah, got it. <laughs> Ha-ha! Yeah. Hell yeah! We did the thing! Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Yay. That was incredibly helpful. We did the thing. You see this shit? Like, mm -hmm. this, uh, this screw has been loose this entire time, and it's been <laughs> just infuriating the shit out of me, because the only thing that I had to grab on that other side with was this handle, right? It would twist. And it would, it would come loose, and like, I just, I kept thinking, this thing's gonna come off and hit me in the face one of these days, you know? So now I have to, I have to tighten that up and see if I can, like, fix the wobble. Okay. But anyway, we're done. High five. Oh, I thought that was grease on it. Woo. Thanks, man. Woo. Thanks, Mark. Hell of a suggestion.